Okay, this is a very nice one. Number seven. When you hold your left arm, left forearm parallel to the floor, what is the direction of the force exerted by the humerus bone on the elbow joint? Okay. Um, so there's actually an example in the textbook. It's, it's almost identical to this. I suggest that you go and look at it. It is exercise 12.3. Make sure that you understand how to do that. Um, and so what I've done is I've just gone and uh, cut that picture from, from that exercise. And here it is. Here you've got a forearm. Now, in the, in the exercise, they had a ball that was in the hand. So we can ignore this guy. Okay? Um, but then it's got this bicep muscle. So this is the forearm. So when you are drawing your free body diagram, number one, your free body diagram and your extended free body diagram, okay, then you are, you are focusing on the forearm. We're not focusing on anything else, okay? Um, and this is the humerus bone. Humerus, is that right? Humerus. And that's why it's called, often in English, it's called the funny bone, because if you hit it, it makes you laugh. Okay. All right, so the question is, what force is this humerus bone uh, applying to the forearm? Okay. So please go check out exercise 12.3. It's extremely helpful. But if we do an extended free body diagram, Okay, let's do an extended free body diagram. So that is now the forearm. All right. Remember, a free body diagram. What we a free body diagram? Just we take this whole body and we collapse it into a single point, right? A single point, and we have all the forces acting on on that that body. And the reason why we would do that is because we're looking at translational motion. Translational, meaning we're only looking at the acceleration of the center of mass. What is happening to the acceleration of the center of mass? But with an extended <clears throat> free body diagram, we are also looking at rotation. And if all the mass is just uh, concentrated into a single point, then we, we will not consider rotation. But that's why we need an extended free body diagram to also consider rotation, which means that we're also looking at <clears throat> alpha. What's happening to our rotational acceleration? Okay, does that make sense? Um, so make sure that you go and check, check out that example. Okay, so what are we doing here? What are all the forces then acting on the forearm? Well, I'm going to start with uh, the center of mass, and we've got gravity, earth on the forearm, okay, and then we've got this bicep muscle, let me draw it there, so this is if, if contact, bicep on forearm, and now this is the question of questions, let's do it in green. What is the direction of the, the force of this humerus bone onto this forearm? So I don't know. So how are we going to solve this? Well, um, I'm just going to draw this force in some arbitrary direction. Force, contact force of the humerus on the forearm. And now we're going to do some analyses, okay? The first way that I can do it, which I'm actually just copying the example in the textbook, is I'm going to see, well, what, what are the forces, because this forearm is in equilibrium, okay? That means that the sum of the forces in the x direction, if we make that our x, is zero. It's not moving in the x direction. So, if I just even look at these vectors, this guy has a component in that direction, okay, and a vertical component, Okay, now we have to cross that one out. So, it's the only force I can see that has a component in the x direction. So, what does that mean? 
it means that this guy has a component that has to oppose it. Okay? So, already I can see now that this direction is, it has the wrong x direction. So, let's, I'm going to redraw it now in this direction. Okay? Hope that's making sense. Okay. So, in order for there to be no acceleration in the x direction, this this force from the humerus bone has to oppose the uh, the x component of this force has to oppose the x component of the bicep muscle force. Okay, so I know now my F humerus on the forearm in the x direction is pointing in that direction. Okay? I hope that's making sense. But we still don't know what's happening with the y component. Okay. So, we've solved that guy. Now let's consider um, some of the torques uh, equal to zero. Because there's no rotation, the all the rotation is zero. Uh, the all the rotation is uh, sums up to zero. So my torques are zero. The sum of the torques are zero. Now, as you can see, I've got one, two, three, four, five forces. Right. Remember, if we consider these components, five forces that are acting on this body. So I need to consider five torques, five potential torques. But I'm interested in finding out the direction of this force. Is it down or is it up? Okay. So one thing that's very handy is because this object is in equilibrium, it's not acceler its center of mass is not ac translating, it's not accelerating its center of mass, and it's not rotating. Okay? It's completely, well, it's, it doesn't have rotational acceleration. So what does this mean? Look here, it says, um, if you check out exercise 12.1, shows that the sum of the torques about the left end, this is not related to this problem, okay, but I want you to pick up this principle. The sum of the torques about the left end of the rod is zero, just like the sum of the torques about the pivot is zero. You can repeat the calculation for torques about the right end of the rod or any other point, and each time you will find that the sum of the torques is zero. The reason is that the rod is not rotating about any point. And so the sum of the torques must be zero about any point. Why am I showing you this? I'm showing you this because if we want to compute the sum of the torques, you can compute it about any point on this body so long as it's in equilibrium. And I'm going to choose sum of the torques about this point. So what happens is when you take the sum of the torques about that point, this force doesn't come into play because it passes through that point of rotation. <clears throat> and then these two don't come into play because they also, their line of action passes through this pivot point, this point of rotation, because there's no moment arm. And so we've only got this guy. So let's say counterclockwise is positive. So if contact bicep on forearm y which is this one here okay multiplied by a moment arm let's call it r1 r1 now is this moment the force the the, the torque that this force causes is it a clockwise or anti-clockwise or counterclockwise well you can see that it is clockwise right it wants to bend it this way. So this is a negative torque based on our convention. Counterclockwise is positive. Now I've chosen, arbitrarily, I've chosen this guy down. And I'm just going to write, what is this force? It's a contact force of the humerus bone on the forearm in the y direction. That's just the force. 
multiplied by R2. Now, does this force cause a clockwise or counterclockwise rotation? Well, can you see that it's going around the pivot point counterclockwise? So it is positive. It's a, oh, oops, times R2. This moment, this torque is positive. Okay? And no other forces are causing a torque, so we set that equal to zero. And if you solve for this force, F contact humerus on the forearm in the Y direction, you are going to get, this is the force of the bicep on the forearm in the Y direction, times R1 over R2. So what this is telling me is, look here, this is telling me, that this force is equal to this force, okay, the, 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 the magnitude of this force, multiplied by the ratio of those, um, of those moment, those lever arms, okay? And the point is that this is a positive value. This thing is a positive value. If this is a positive value, it means I've chosen the direction of this uh, component correctly. If I had chosen this up, for example, okay, I would have gotten a minus here, and I would have gotten a minus there, okay? If I would chosen that up, I would have gotten a clockwise moment or torque, which means that I would have solved this, and I would have gotten a, this force would have been a negative force, which means it tells me I've chosen the direction. I, I get the right magnitude, but my direction is wrong. So I need to then switch the direction. So anyways, this has been a long video, but I hope you've learned something. That if I chose it down, then that is plus. That is plus, which means that is correct. And these two components then give me a, a component there in that direction. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. Good luck.